reporting. So certainly by, um, certainly by the time of the Civil War, there's not a single wolf left in Ohio. We exterminated them. What does it mean if you call the exterminator to your house for termites? It's going to kill everything. It's going to get rid of everything. Wolves were exterminated in Ohio. And the exact date doesn't matter. You know, it's, let's say, somewhere between 1800 and 1850. They kill them all. Um, because they were a pest, because they were a varmint, because they were a predator, and what European settlers who were coming into, and at that point it's actually Americans, it's not even people who have their origins in Europe, it's people from the east coming into the Northwest Territory to settle farms. Um, there's not, there is no room for any predator other than who? Me. That's the attitude. There's no room for a predator other than humans. I will be the only predator. So wolves were exterminated in Ohio. Did we make wolves extinct? No, but we made them extinct in Ohio. So when we have a species that we make extinct in a particular area, we call that extirpated. And I can never remember if the R or the I comes first. Yes, sir. So this species was extirpated from Ohio. So let's talk about what wolves do. So if we wanted to describe wolves' niche, because we kind of said niche is like a job description. So what do we know about wolves? They're day active. They might even be, they might even have round the clock cycles of activity. As far as I know, I think they're day active. Maybe they're dawn and dusk active. I think they're mostly day. I'm not a wolf biologist. Well, we could look it up, but not today. Let's say they're day active. Um, they're predators. And what kind of game do wolves typically take down? Deer. Okay, wolves could take down deer where wolves and deer live together. Elk, um, caribou. Up in Alaska, they have big caribou herds. These are all big animals. This is big game. Now, there's a wonderful book by a name, man named Farley Moat, and I should, I should bring it in and read some because it is one of those books that um, I was reading late at night in bed with my husband asleep next to me, and he kicked me out of the bedroom because I was laughing so hard. I kept waking him up. Um, Farley Moat is, is a biologist and a writer and a fantastic guy, and he talks about some of the early research that documented that wolves in the Arctic for a great deal of the year live on mice. These 90-pound gray wolves are eating mice. They're like now they're eating, yes, just like you've probably seen coyotes or foxes do. Now they're eating a heck of a lot of them. But, you know. So wolves are predators on, you know, we'll say big game when it's available. If you're a wolf and you need to feed your cubs and there's an elk, you'll take the elk. If you're a wolf and you need to find, feed your cubs and there are 150 mice, you'll eat 150 mice because you'll do what it takes to feed your cubs. So big game, you know, plus eh, whatever else they can get. You know, I mean, they're, they're definitely primarily carnivorous. Um, wolves, like dogs, however, will eat fruit. They will eat insects if they're desperate. But primarily they're big game, and we could, we could even say medium game hunters. That's really hard to read. I apologize. Medium game hunters. Is that better? No, it looks like Jean. Sorry. Okay. So they're day active. They're predators. Um, do wolves have a single puppy at a time? No, just like dogs, they have litters. They produce litters. Where do they raise their litters? In a nest in a tree? Yeah. Dens. So they, they create dens, um, you know, very often underground, but wolves can den in, if you've got big old trees, they can den in those. They can den in lots of kinds of places. 
Um, what else do we know about wolves' niche? They're warm-blooded. I don't know that that matters. I mean, they're mammals. They do parental care. They wouldn't den up if they weren't mammals. They take care of their babies, so they need a place to do that. Okay, well, that's, that's a reasonable description of their niche, right? Um, oh, they can, they can survive, um, you know, hot, hot summers, cold winters, no problem. If anybody has a dog, especially huskies and shepherds tend to blow coat in the spring, their coat starts to fall out because their winter coat falls out and their summer coat, which is lighter, comes in. Question. Thank you. So, um, yeah, thank you. That's perfect. They're pack hunters. Which, frankly, if they weren't pack hunters, they couldn't take down caribou. They couldn't take down big, big game. Okay? You can, you know, one wolf can take down a rabbit or a raccoon or, you know, a smaller animal by itself. One wolf alone probably can't chase, tire, and kill something really large like an elk or a caribou. So they, they do hunt in packs, and they'll do surround techniques, and they've got all kinds of cool tactics. And in the next chapter, we'll watch some videos on predator-prey relationships, and we'll see wolves in action. Oh, I, always, I always feel bad for the prey species, but hey, everybody's got to eat, right? Um, okay, so this is, this is the wolves' niche. We have just described their niche. Well, when wolves were extirpated from Ohio, it's as though this job, this job which the wolves had been doing, was left open. Yes, sir. Oh, I thought you had your hand up. So it's suddenly as though there's a job opening, there's a vacancy. You can imagine reading in the newspaper, top predator wanted, big game specialist preferred, day active preferred, um, pack hunters, um, experience in pack hunting, and um, raising litters in dens, good. You know, it's like there's a classified ad for this job description, for this niche that has suddenly been left open. There's a vacancy. There is no top predator after the wolves are all killed in Ohio. I mean, because we also killed off all the black bears. We also killed off all the mountain lions. Um, it was all part of the, the great killing, <laughs> really. Um, we dramatically changed the landscape and the ecosystem in Ohio. Um, so you've got this open niche, and you know what's going to kill deer after you kill off all the wolves? People, yeah. Humans are left as the only top predator because we killed off all the other top predators. Now, here's the other part of that: we also killed off a lot of everything else. So my dad grew up on a farm in Columbia County, just about 10 miles north of here, and he always talked about how this was in the 1950s, so this is probably most, many of your grandparents were probably alive in the 50s, maybe the 60s. Dad always talked about what a big deal it was if a deer crossed the farm. And if a deer crossed the farm, everybody piled out the back door to go see the deer. How many of you pile out the back door if there's a deer in the yard? Okay, well good, you still have a sense of wonder. Because a lot of people are like, well, no, they're kind of like pigeons at this point, you know, they're everywhere. You know, I count like seven deer on my way to school every single morning. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm glad that you still pile out the door. That's good. I like the sense of wonder. Um, and honestly, I stop and look too. But it's not like, oh my gosh, we've never seen a deer on the farm. Like, you see deer all the time, don't you? You should. If you're looking, keep your eyes out. <laughs> They're everywhere. Um, by 1900, not only there were, were there no wolves in Ohio, there were also no beavers, almost no turkeys, almost no deer. Um, we had basically extirpated a lot of species. Beavers were completely extirpated from Ohio. I think turkeys were also completely extirpated from Ohio prior to 1900. Um, 
So beavers, turkeys, definitely. Mountain lions are extirpated and continue to be. Bobcats were extirpated. Um, basically, most, we killed everything. We just darn well went through and killed everything. Okay, so, you know, now we have game law because of that. I mean, we have hunting limits because of this. So, as the deer population started to come back, and we'll talk why, a little bit about why deer did make such a comeback. As the deer population started to come back, there's still this flashing neon sign that says vacancy, 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 vacancy. The niche that wolves occupied is still vacant. So, who ends up filling that niche? Bingo, sir. Bingo. So, in 1803, you know, the point at which, you know, the early 19th century, 1800, 1810, I don't care which year you want to pick, between 1800 and 1850, when we were busy killing all the wolves in Ohio, there were coyotes out west. There were no coyotes in Ohio. Do you understand that? The coyotes have not always existed in Ohio. Coyotes were a western thing. Coyotes belong to the plains of Oklahoma and the, the Rocky Mountains and Colorado and, you know, the deserts of California and Utah. When you watch Coyote and Roadrunner, there's a reason he's always in the desert because coyotes were a desert species. And that western coyote, how many of you have seen a coyote? Okay, good, excellent. So when I start to describe the western coyote, you might raise an eyebrow. Western coyotes are pretty little. They're about 30 pounds. A big western coyote is like a 30-pound dog. Um, you know, a, a, a female might go 20, 25. A big male might be 30 pounds. They're probably, you know, knee-high or no better. They're little animals. They tend to prey mostly on rabbits, mice, rats. Um, I've, I've talked about the fact that I lived in Arizona for a while. When I moved to Tucson, I had a house cat, little Ohio house cat. And the first thing my friends told me was, if you like your cat, you will keep her inside at night because the life expectancy for a house cat in the desert at night is about one night um, because a dumb little cat who's never met a coyote <laughs> will be eaten very fast. It may be a matter of hours after she leaves the back door. Um, so I kept her in because <laughs> I liked my cat. Um, so those, east, those, those western coyotes are these little dogs, these little they're, they're canis, they're a dog species. Um, they're in the dog family. They're not big game hunters. Western coyote is not bringing down an elk. Western coyote is bringing down a rabbit, not bringing down an elk, not bringing down a caribou, not bringing down a white-tailed deer. Definitely not a caribou. Definitely not a caribou. Not a moose. I mean, wolf, wolf packs will take down moose. Do you know how big a moose is? My head would not reach a moose's shoulder. They're gigantic animals. A wolf pack can work together and bring down a moose. Tear that sucker up. <laughs> um, Western coyotes aren't going to be able to do that. Enter, oh yes, the eastern coyote. Now, most of you said you've seen a coyote. They are not 30-pound dogs. A big eastern coyote can go about 60 pounds. Big male, about twice the size of its western counterpart. Um, much bigger, much heavier bodied, taller. Turns out, and we'll at some point, probably in the next chapter, we'll watch a really cool movie that talks about the eastern coyotes created themselves. They're a crossbreed, they're a hybrid between existing Canadian wolves and western coyotes. So they have some wolf DNA. If you actually look at their DNA sequence, and we talked about how you can look at how closely two species are related based on their DNA sequence, um, eastern coyotes have a lot of wolf DNA, which is part of what gives them that size. So, you know, the western coyote, the eastern coyote, let's talk about what niche the eastern coyote occupies. Let's shrink this. Yeah. I actually found what I call small connection moose is from 
Okay. Okay, so the eastern coyote, is it day active? We tend to talk about eastern coyotes as being crepuscular. Do you remember that word? Dawn and dusk. So nocturnal is night active, diurnal is day active, crepuscular is dawn and dusk active. Okay. Is the eastern coyote a predator? Yeah. Yeah. Now, the next question that you know is going to come up, is it a big game predator? What do coyotes eat? House cats. Actually, there's never been a documented case. There's been one documented case in the last hundred years of a coyote attacking a human. Is that deer? Oh, deer, yes. They, well, so here's the interesting thing. Western coyotes are totally small game predators. They're eating cats and rabbits and squirrels and rats and mice. The, west, the eastern coyote is a little bit bigger. So the eastern, coy, the eastern coyote, now, mind you, eastern coyotes will eat cats and mice and rabbits and chickens. I never had a problem with my chickens. But um, so definitely small game predators. But also, remember, they're a little bit bigger. They don't have a problem with medium-sized game. They don't have a problem with medium-sized game. Now, here's the really interesting part to biologists. There have been now consistent reports that eastern coyotes have taken down deer. Now, typically, you know, even an eastern coyote may not take on a full-grown 10-point buck because that's a pretty intimidating prospect. I would not want to try to chase down and kill with my bare teeth, if you can imagine this. Um, a big giant 10 point buck. I think I would come out on the worst end of the equation. I'd be dead. I'd be shredded. <laughs> um, Eastern coyotes. Now, coyote, Western coyotes are not pack hunters, okay? Western coyotes don't form packs like wolves do. Western coyotes typically have a family group that's basically a husband and a wife. You have a mated pair and their offspring and you might have one additional relative, like you might have a yearling pup from the last litter, you might have a sibling. They don't form large pack structures. It's typically just pairs and their offspring. They're not pack hunters. They usually, western coyotes are solo hunters. So basically, hey, you stay home with the kids, I'm gonna go out and get us something to eat, and they do. And one of the pair will stay, and it's, it's male and female, both, both hunt, one will stay home with the pups while the other goes off, hunts, and brings back food. Not pack hunters. Eastern coyotes have been exhibited to be, there, there is some indication that some eastern coyotes do hunt in small packs. Okay? So, solo, whoops, not sola, solo and pack hunting. Yes, sir. I beat up the yeah, I would too. They're a predator. Okay, so um, coyotes, do they have individual pups? No, they have litters. They den up to care for their litters. They're fine with the hottest and the coldest weather. How does their niche line up to the wolf's niche? Is it identical? No, it's not identical, but you know, it's similar enough. And it's not like they're competing with wolves. It's not like we have wolves in Ohio. There are places where wolves and coyotes ranges overlap. The Rockies has both um, wolves and coyotes. Yellowstone has wolves and coyotes. And in those places, they compete with one another. They are enemies. Wolves and coyotes are not buddies because they're all dog types. Like, oh, you're another dog. No, it's like, Rah! Get away from my elk. Um, and there, I've got a movie that we may or may not get to watch in here um, about one of the wolf packs in Yellowstone. And on, on film, they catch the wolf pack killing a coyote. Coyote got too close to their kill. Business is business. They killed him. Um, so we have these niches that exist. And they're not, it's not like a jigsaw puzzle where they're perfect fits. But coyotes, kind of the eastern coyote, 
kind of slipped in and took that vacancy. And they're filling the niche that was left, be was left open when wolves were extirpated from Ohio. So why can coyotes do this? What makes them so adaptable? This is the next thing we're going to talk about. So we're going to talk about generalists. So some species have a really wide niche. Okay? And when I say wide niche, this means they can eat a variety of foods. So think about coyotes. Well, those western coyotes were small game, mouse, chipmunk, squirrel, rat hunters. Come back here. Can you eat deer if you have to? Yep, I can do that. Can you eat raccoons if you have to? Yep, I can do that. Can you eat house cats? Yep, I can do that. Very wide variety of foods that they'll eat. Um, species that have a wide niche tend to be able to tolerate um, temperature shifts. Can you handle a 100 degree day in August? Yep, I can do that. Can you handle a 10 degree below zero day in February? Yep, I can do that. Not a problem. Um, very often, generalists can shift their reproductive patterns. And remind me to talk about coyotes in this. Coyotes actually do this weird thing where when the population is under additional pressure, they tend to have larger litters. So in environmental science, we used to do a whole unit on coyotes and um, a lot of counties out west. And it's, it's a relic of what we used to do here and just kill everything. Um, They'll have coyote shoots, and like some sportsman's club, I think the term sportsman is used loosely here, but that's my perspective, um, will host it, and the person who brings in the most dead coyotes at the end of the day wins like a $1,000 pot or something. And it's just kill them, kill them, kill them, kill them, kill them. I think you probably have to bring in four paws and a tail to prove that you killed it. Um, you know, or maybe it's just four paws. I don't know what yet, but anyway. What they've found, what biologists have found, is the way coyotes respond to heavy predation is they have larger litters. The more you kill, the bigger their litters. Female coyotes in areas that have had heavy coyote predation will go from having litters of five or six on average to having litters of up to 20. That's a lot of mouths. She doesn't even have that many nipples. I mean, she doesn't, seriously. She's, she's, she's a mammal. She's nursing those pups. She doesn't have 20 nipples. If she's lucky, she's got 12. She might have 14. You know, it's tough to raise 20 pups. You try raising 20 pups. I will. Okay, I want to see it. I want to see you nurse 20 pups at a time. Yeah, it's not going to be pretty. So, you know, coyotes are really flexible. Guess what? They're a generalist. Guess what other species are generalists? Hey, I'm going until the bell rings, folks. Well, what's this? Nobody likes them. It's a cockroach. Where can they live? Anywhere. But can they eat? Anything. How many babies can they have? It depends on how much food's available. That's a cockroach. It's a bug. Okay. It's a cockroach. It's an insect. It's a fantastic generalist. Where do you find cockroaches? all over the planet. Why don't they die? Because they're going to outlive you and me. Okay, we will pick this up tomorrow.